Hello and thanks for joining us on News Center Maine Plus. I'm Amanda Hill. Climate change has major impacts on our life here in Maine. It impacts the weather, the severity of storms we see, water temperatures in the Gulf of Maine, fishing industries, and so much more. For our Maine's Changing Climate Weekly Reports, our meteorologists put together a five-part series debunking the top five climate myths, including sea level rise is exaggerated, global warming can't be real because it still gets cold, climate change isn't bad, scientists have been wrong before and can be wrong with this, and the climate has always changed, humans can't be the cause. So let's start with the sea level rise. We've seen several storms that have severely damaged our coastline, and a lot of it is contributed to the rise in sea level. New Center Maine meteorologist Ryan Breton breaks this down for us. We start off our list of top climate myths with number five. Sea level rise is exaggerated. Well, living and working in Maine, we see the power of the ocean in every season. But maybe you've seen memes like this one claiming that Plymouth Rock has been in the same spot since 1620. It hasn't. In just the last 200 years, it's been relocated four times. And sometimes on a bright sunny day, it can be easy to forget how our coastline has evolved over the centuries, even as that change is now picking up speed. There are three main reasons why sea level is going up. Ice sheets and glaciers in the Arctic are melting and that water is flowing into the oceans. On top of that, the ocean as a whole is getting warmer and warmer water expands, taking up more space, adding to the rise. And unrelated to climate change, in some places land is sinking or subsiding a bit over time, meaning the water level is inching up. The data tells a pretty strong story though. Over the last 100 years, the sea level has increased an average of about eight inches in Maine, but the rate of that increase has gone up. Since 2000, the sea level has been rising by nearly two inches per decade. If that rate continues, it would mean additional sea level rise of more than a foot and a half in the next 100 years. It's natural to think of storms when you think of coastal flooding, but anyone who lives or works on the water knows that these days it's pretty common to have minor flooding during high astronomical tide cycles, even without a storm. These king tides show what happens when you add a little bit of water on top of a higher tide. When a storm happens during one of these king tides, as we saw last winter, it can be devastating. Last January's storm broke the record for highest water level in Portland, surpassing the infamous blizzard of 78. Sea level rise sets the bar for each storm these days a little higher. And if you're starting at a higher bar, it can take a weaker storm during a high astronomical tide to cause what would have required a stronger storm decades ago. So the bottom line is this, what appears to be a small change results in a big difference. Coastal flooding events are becoming more common because the bar has been raised by the rising sea level. So it's tough to say sea level rise is exaggerated when one way or another, we live in a place where we see the impact now multiple times per year. I'm meteorologist Ryan Breton, News Center, Maine. Meanwhile, winter in Maine can get pretty chilly, which usually begs the question, given how cold it gets, how can the globe be warming? Meteorologist Dana Osgood debunks that myth. An important place to start is the difference between weather and climate. As defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, weather is the state of the atmosphere with respect to heat or cold, wetness or dryness, calm or storm, and clearness or cloudiness. All of the things you would expect in terms of weather. Climate is defined as the average course or condition of the weather at a place, usually over a period of years exhibited by temperature, wind velocity, and precipitation. The time period referred to here is typically 30 years. This means that the weather you experience in a single day is not reflective of the climate at large. You have to study weather trends for a longer period of time to see how they change. Definitions aside, there's overwhelming evidence that the Earth continues to warm despite cold snaps. 2023 was the hottest year on record, and the top 10 all occurred after 2010. The temperature change is also significant, the average global temperature skyrocketing since around the 1850s. Why the 1850s? It's when the Industrial Revolution started to expand beyond Britain and greenhouse gas pollution exploded. 
One event is not indicative of how a climate is changing, though extreme cold events may become less frequent as the climate warms. However, other extreme events are likely to become more common. In conclusion, no. Periods of anomalously cold weather are not an argument against climate change because weather and climate are not the same. I'm meteorologist Dana Osgood, New Center, Maine. Up next, when it comes to Maine's changing climate, a lot can sound a little concerning. But is it really all doom and gloom? Here's meteorologist Keith Carson debunking our third myth. When it comes to climate change, sometimes I hear, well, is it really a bad thing if we get warmer? Living in a place like Maine, it kind of makes sense at first glance. An extended summer tour season, less fuel intensive heating needs during the winter, and this leads to a deeper conversation that perhaps isn't being had enough. Is climate change really an existential threat to human survival? The short answer is no. Humans are unlikely to go extinct due to a two to four degree Celsius increase in temperatures. But the infrastructure created for our civilization is fragile and would be enormously impacted with deadly results. Food production is one of the biggest challenges in a warming planet. The current world population is a little over 8 billion, is it expected to grow to 10 billion by 2050. And according to Columbia University, the global demand for food could increase by more than 60% due to the population increase and growing desire of the middle class for meat and dairy. Now it's worth noting that increased carbon dioxide would benefit the growth of many plants and crops. However, the extreme weather caused by climate change, such as increased frequency of flood events and extended droughts negates all of that advantage. For example, a 2018 study found that U.S. production of corn could be cut in half by a four degrees increase in global temperatures. According to a 2011 National Academy of Sciences report, for every degree Celsius the global temperature rises, there'll be a five to 15% decrease in overall crop production. And then there's the issue of sea level rise in population centers. Mainers know people love the ocean and living near it. That holds true not just in New England, not just in the United States, but across the entire world. According to the UN, roughly 40% of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers or about 60 miles of the coast. With sea level rise projected to continue as emissions accumulate, that means cities and towns near the ocean need to either try to build protections from the ocean or raise and move crucial infrastructure. Both of these options are enormously expensive. A 2022 report by the UN Environmental Program estimates that adaptation costs could climb to roughly 200 billion by 2030 and 400 billion by 2050. The cost of emission mitigation is much lower than the cost of adaptation to a warming climate. And none of that even addresses the inequality and the impacts of a warming planet. Developing and poorer nations have been and will continue to be disproportionately impacted by food scarcity, sea level rise, and extreme weather. That was Keith Carson reporting. We'll have our final two myths when we come back. Welcome back. When topics of climate change and global warming are brought up, some people argue scientists are just wrong or are even lying about their claims. New Center Maine meteorologist Aaron Myler dives into the history of climate research and why some information we see around the science does indeed change. The myth I'm busting today is the idea that scientists are often wrong. While science isn't always perfect, many of the mistakes people notice come from their own perceptions. For example, with weather forecasts, we might see clouds at the start and the end of the day, but we forget about the sunshine in between while we're stuck inside at work. This can make it seem like the forecast was wrong, even though it wasn't. Science evolves as we learn more. This is why forecasts improve as a storm gets closer or why information changed quickly during the COVID-19 pandemic. Scientists start with the best information they have and as new facts come in, they adjust their opinions. That doesn't mean they were wrong at first, but were doing the best they could with the data available at the time. Science is always evolving with new information. How does this relate to climate change? It may seem like scientists haven't changed their opinions on it, and that's exactly the point. Even as new data comes in, climate change remains undeniable. 
climate change data has been debated for decades. From 1965 to 1979, scientists were divided on whether we were headed for an ice age or we were headed for a warming planet. A 2008 study by Thomas Peterson and his team found that despite media stories focusing on an ice age, only 10% of scientists predicted cooling while 62% predicted warming. But which headline grabs more attention or maybe at that time sells more newspapers? Ice Age sounds a lot more clickable, I'll admit it. Now, today, 97% of climate experts agree that global warming is man-made. This consensus is supported by John Cook and his colleagues in their 2016 peer-reviewed study, which compiled opinions from a plethora of climate scientists. The study also found a direct correlation between lack of expertise in climate science and the disbelief of man-made climate change. Basically, more expertise equals a greater belief. We have decades of research that continues to support climate change as a real and ongoing issue. It's not that the science is wrong, this is one of those times where the evidence has been proven again and again. If you remember back to middle school scientific method lesson, when a hypothesis is repeatedly supported, it moves from being a theory to a fact. Therefore, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has stated that climate change is an established fact. Yes, there are occasional inaccuracies in science that get corrected as new evidence comes in, but no, scientists are not often wrong. They carefully gather data, test their hypotheses, and only speak out when they have enough evidence to support their conclusions. In the studio, meteorologist Aaron Myler, New Center, Maine. Which brings us to our number one myth surrounding climate change, that it's not caused by humans. Here's Keith again to explain how we know that humans are the major driver of global warming. We're down now to the number one climate change myth. The climate has always been changing. What I hear over and over again is, how do we know it's us? How do we know it's not just a natural cycle? I get it. After all, at one point, Manhattan was under a mile of ice. Climate change has happened before, but scientists have been sure since the 1960s this change in the climate is being caused by humans. So how do we know? Let's start with the most obvious driver for a warming Earth, the sun. There are a few reasons we know the sun is not responsible for a recent warming. First, the measure of incoming sun energy to the Earth, solar irradiance, has remained flat or actually decreased as our temperatures have rapidly increased. This is especially evident since the 1970s. Another reason we know the sun is not responsible for our current warming, the air high up in the atmosphere, known as the stratosphere, has been cooling since the late 1970s. That stratospheric cooling has been taking place while the troposphere, where we live, has been warming rapidly. Think about it. If it was the sun, how could the layer closer to the sun cool while the layer beneath it warmed rapidly? The answer is, it's not possible. That's how we've eliminated not only the sun, but any external influences in space. Now, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We've known that since the 1850s. And since the 1850s, we've known that greenhouse gases trap warmth in the lower part of the atmosphere. This has generally had a net positive effect for life on Earth as it keeps it inhabitable. But too much of a good thing can have negative impacts. Using ice cores, which contain trapped air bubbles from hundreds of thousands of years ago, scientists have recreated the history of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, and the graph is striking. So while there have certainly been natural variations in carbon dioxide in the past, nothing approaches the scale and speed of our recent run-up to over 400 parts per million. Still not convinced humans are responsible for the recent surge in carbon dioxide? What if I told you we caught fossil fuels red-handed with a fingerprint? There are three naturally occurring carbon isotopes on Earth, C12, C13, and C14, the last of which decays radioactively to nitrogen with a half-life of about 6,000 years. Why does this matter? Well, because of that half-life, carbon that is pulled out of fossil fuels that have been in the ground for a long time prior to burning demonstrate the C14 isotope is almost entirely gone. In addition, plants hold a lower percentage of C13 compared to the overall atmosphere. So, by measuring the percentage of C13 and 14 isotopes in the atmosphere's carbon dioxide over time and seeing them plummet, scientists can easily conclude that not only is CO2 increasing, but that CO2 is definitely coming from the burning of fossil fuels. 
This phenomenon even has a name, the Seuss effect. Now, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases warm our atmosphere, and fossil fuels have added CO2 to the atmosphere at an unprecedented rate. It's pretty much a 1 plus 1 equals 2 equation. And last but not least, the speed of warming. Although the climate has changed in the past, it has never warmed or cooled at this speed. Now, you might say, how do we know what the temperature was so long ago? Scientists use a complex process of temperature proxies, such as something we see here a lot in Maine, snow. There are measurable chemical differences in snow formed at different temperatures. Therefore, ice cores can be used to provide a record of temperature going back around 250,000 years. In addition, yearly banding is found in fossilized corals and lake sediment. Each band has a chemistry that reflects specific temperature ranges. Tree rings are also used as they get wider or thinner based on the temperature. So scientists can say with a relatively high degree of confidence, the Earth has never warmed this quickly before. Keith Carson there. Thanks so much for watching as we debunk the top five climate myths. Remember to check back here on New Center Main Plus for more projects and stories we're working on. Take care.